being energetic, I, I'm so good at that. Um, um, because I haven't heard from our illustrious feature, Tom Curry, it's technically set up that we don't, if, if, no, if he strolls in here at eight o'clock, he, he's getting his 20 minutes, he so deserves it, he claimed the space. But um, otherwise, we're just going to be reading things and back from September because he was really sick. Poetry himself couldn't even be here for his feature, so he will be here for a poetry feature a little bit later on, which is awesome, very awesome, cool, yeah. Um, but because I said this was mini feature night, I was going to start by reading a bunch of poems from other people, and maybe at the end of the night I'm doing mini feature because it's mini feature night, because that's what I was going on, uh, reading a few old pieces from myself. But I'm not going to do that now, so I thought. I would start reading things from Scar's publications. Um, for people who know, hey, I would wonder if John would be willing to grab my other spiral ring thing out of my folder, which I was too stupid to think about advertising to people right now. Don't forget um, it. Exactly. Um, for all this year, I've been doing this 2013 poetry date book after the apocalypse, and today I just released the 2014 one called Don't Forget It. Don't Forget It. And it's got this really cool destroyed pencil on it. But, um, and the cool thing about this one is you've got the last 10 days of 2013 and the first 10 days of 2015 on it as well. It's got a bunch of other really cool things and it's got poetry for every week of the year. And I always feel like I've got so much to tell you that I just lose my breath because I'm trying to tell you everything all at once. But what I was going to first do is read a few poems from other people from this. Um, and I will save a few more for the next time for our next feature that's coming up in two weeks, but I haven't read this in a while, but we will try. I think I'm going to go with Jerry's here. Hi, Jerry. And he is going to be here to read a little bit later on. Awesome. Um, but the first one I was going to read is from the Poetry After the Apocalypse date book, and this is a poem by John Gray. I have no idea which magazine it's from, but it's in the Apocalypse State Book. This is called Wet Letter Office. <sighs> There's a dread to coming home on a rainy day, like today. Letters poking out of the mailbox, soaked to their paper skin. With catalogs, it's a welcome revenge. The books are normally cardboard protected, but it's the personal stuff that I extract so gingerly, pathetically, like ushering homeless waifs in out from the weather. It's not just a case of dry, drying them out on the countertop. Already the ink runs. Consonants leak off in all directions. Vowels blend into one another or ooze apart. Seep into envelopes. Seep in two. Envelopes shred at my fingers. Missives hold their sentences under water like they're drowning. They're actually drowning kittens. My eyes wade through the mess and don't know if I'm dragging out the drenched corpses of love, cries for help, news of old friends, or please send me more money letters. Even the addresses are blurred to the point where nobody could be able to read them or live at them. All I know is that the correspondence meant for me, surely lucid in its infancy, but now a quagmire of bleeding scrawl, inky nonsense. I sit back in my kitchen chair, surrounded by failed communication. Rain beats its garbled Morse code on my rooftop. What I'll never know is Kalosin in. John Gray. Thank you. Perfectly 
start that with the rain, with the lovely rain we have today. Um, this one is from probably last week, but this is a piece called the Bus Station, and it's by Katrina Guaricio. Guaracio. Katrina, I apologize. Katrina, this is your poem. This is Bus Station. A little after 10.30, we sit at the bus station, my leg thrown over yours, head rests on shoulder, your arm around me, absently caressing my shoulder as though a lifetime habit. The ice of your eyes bites my lower lip as you tell me where the wild things are. In a, in a cadence so calm, it stirs my soul. I tired of hiding my insides from my out. I crawl inside you then, build a home along the bones of your ribcage. A bed is out of your cartilage that is marked from, marked from the sternum, a pillow for my soft tissue between vertebrae. I fall asleep along the rhythm of your heart. I leave a piece of myself there. A little before 11, you collect yourself and join the crowd surrounding the departing door. Without a second thought, I give you my last cigarette, a kiss for the road, and a handful carefully chosen words. A shared serene convergence before the road drags you away. Katrina. Thank you. Yay, thank you, Katrina. And after the apocalypse, yay. And if anybody is interested, and by the way, they're not even here yet, if they're going to be coming by, I know that there's a piece from our potential feature from Tom Curry and Janine Ravislute and Tom Roby. They've got stuff in here. And don't forget it. And I just released it today, but I'm going to have to notify all the contributors in it this week. <laughs> so say it was very quick. Um, I was going to read one poem. Last time you're going to see this issue from me. This is V119 of Down in the Dirt. This is a September, October issue. The all uh, mangled roadway. Um, I thought I would share with you a piece from Stanley M. Noah. And this is The Fall of Berlin to May 1945. Russians are at the Fuhrer bunker now. Where is A. H. and his new wife, Ava? In this hour, the dirty work had to be done. Up came the six bodies of Goebbels' murdered young children, killed by their parents, Magda and Joseph, placed on the ground, side by side. The broken, bent, burnt, their eyes open, looking at nothing. The cold, objective camera moving, rolling slowly, did a good job filming each child, each the subject of what remains in a total war. After identification, the duty was over. It had been very emotional for some, others just a methodical, dreadful process. Then the Russian, the Russians, framed in black and white, turned, lit cigarettes, and disappeared. In long days that followed, there was a cleanup, brick by brick, and shovels. Streetcars and rail came back. Outdoor cafes opened with the smell of coffee and flowers. Retail shops, too, had the latest apparel. Then, all of a sudden, it was 1950. The Fuhrer bunker. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, so is there, I know. Mellow movie stuff, World War II, but thank you, Stanley. Um, and because somebody stole, or stole, bought my copies of uh, CC&D magazine, I figure I could show off the cover. This is CC&D, because <laughs> I don't have the issue with me. Um, and the next issue I will be able to show you, I'm going to read two from this. 
before I leave it at that. Uh, this is a poem by Jessica Pilgreen, and this is called Death at 6 a.m. An unexpected struggle, his arms stiff and erect, outstretched as he feebly struggles to remain aloft, casting circular waves outward from the murky center, unable to push himself up against the gravity of death. I dip my spoon in a feeble attempt to snatch him from impending doom, but I only succeed in stirring his frenzy. On the surface, he spasms briefly before turning over into the brown water. Overtaken by it all, he slowly settles to the bottom like a piece of soot or a rotten leaf. He is an empty shell, but still I drag him from the depths and I gently fold him into the whiteness of my napkin before tossing him into the vastness of the garbage can and order another cup of coffee. Wow. <laughs> thank you, Jessica. I can applaud them holding to my neck. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And a very, very short one because it's appropriate because this is from our N Tabor. And this is something I like about the new issues of CCD. Starting in 2014, they're going to be released through Amazon.com, which means they'll be available for sale in the UK and in Central Europe as well. And when I get poets like R.N. Tabor, who's been around for years with me, he's not going to have to pay an arm and a leg for shipping to have it sent to him. This is a short poem from Mr. Tabor. This is Autumn Leaves. Pavement art at heaven's door left ajar. A love affair once summer. Thank you. Thank you. I wasn't able to applaud appropriately, but thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And I may read some of my own stuff, but I think right at this very moment, I'm going to call up my ultra sexy, wonderful, handy dandy sidekick. So please give it up and have a nice long stretch for our Mr. Bob Rashko. Adjusting things, how's that for you? So this one, I've got, it's a totally adjusted yeah. thing, it's awesome. There we go. Oh, and I should say, I've got to learn how to, oh no, I don't have a set up yet. I've got to have that timer thing on. I don't know how to do it. All right, this is new, it was, I didn't go to Jack's Monday night for waiting for the bus, but Buddha did a few prompts, so I decided to write a poem based on his prompt, one of his prompts. And it's called, well, it actually isn't called anything. The prompt is in the days of mist and whiskey, which is the first line. In the days of mist and whiskey, the bottles half obscured by foggy drift, my mind was pretty clear. It hammered out shanties several a day, with no reassurance from pills. Today, in the cool lakeside cottage, the geese on parade in the sun, I linger till tea, watching shadows as much as I'm willing to roam, and think back on a time of terrible thirst, a time when there lived a young sod who dallied, dallied with mistresses, ink to the board, my half-shadow fled beyond a farmer's fence. Thank you very much. And now, since I was going to do this two weeks ago and I didn't, this is from the Outlaw Bible of American Poetry. And this is one of the major, very major poetry renegades of the United States of the 1960s and 70s. His name is Stuart Z. Perkoff. And, yeah, it rhymes with something else, but we won't go there. And, um, which one was I going to, oh, yes, of course, of course. <coughs> Untitled by Stuart Z. Perkoff. 
poets of the world, be careful. I can't say it strongly enough. I know, I know, I tell you, I know. That she stands on every street corner waiting and watching. That she looks into the dark doorways and empty windows seeking. That she tirelessly walks up and down the hard streets of the world calling, watch out, you fools. You are blind as well as deaf. That's one of the things she hates. Be careful, poets. It's not enough to put a pretty word next to another one. A real image or two studying your verse won't save you at this reckoning. This is the real thing. Take cover, poets. She is knocking on the door. Are you shivering in your shit-filled shoes? Have you roses growing out of your nostrils? She is coming. She is coming. She is coming through the door. She is coming up the stairs. She is coming, opening the doors of the bedrooms and the eyes, looking, sh looking in. She wants to hear no stories. She wants to hear no songs. I think she's had her belly full of singing. She is merciless. She knows what you have done. There is no use crying about it, making up fancy tales. You've gotten too good at that. Anyway, she'll take it back. It's hers. She wants it back. Run, poets, run. Hide, poets, hide. Be careful. Take cover. I warn you. I know, I tell you. This I know. She's coming. Up and down the streets. In and out of the houses. In the dark and the light. Seeking, looking, crying, mercilessly examining every soul. I warn you. She is as relentless as you would expect her to be. It's hers. You know it. When she finds you, she will take it back. Here's one more by Stuart C. It's called Love is the Silence. Love is the silence out of which woman speaks, the female country, the grieving country. I stole those images from a wild girl's mouth. I am a witch. I deal with death, she said. I struggle against it. The poem is my struggle, I said. A different craft. The once I hungered where the two crafts crossed to take within my hands that power and heed it at will. Her lips moved in the dark room, blue with kissing that cold thing. Woman is silence, she said. A different craft. Thank you. yourself for some more because you're awesome. Give us some more jerk off. I mean perk off. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Um, I hope that the man from Water of Life Press is ready because I would love to hear what he has to say. And he even said to him, and I totally said this, but like, if you need any help with anything, right. but please give it up for Mr. Patrick Hurley. See, I see him, he's like, I have to take a shot before I go. I wish, uh, I lost getting his attention. <laughs> Having some bourbon would be nice. All right. Yes, Water of Life Press. Yay. Soon to publish Janet. Publishing in your neighborhood on paper bags soon. From pull tabs and other things to stick your fingers through. Late, your icy fingers crash in my spirit, pulling me in deeper than I know how to go. I kiss your soft belly as I am forever washed away in you. I leave my impression in your soft sand, and you hold it there, playfully tickling the edges, then erasing all in one fell swoop, one mad rush in. I give you flat stone offerings. They skip across your skin, joyful as a child returning home. And you take them in, gizzard stones in your belly. Lake, you hold my dreams in your long curls, rolling the shared visions within you. You are broader than I can see and deeper than I want to go. Still, you pull me to your depths, holding me there until I am cold in you. You explode before me, 
exposing your jagged edges, thrusting your icy fingers through me, turning me around in you, spewing me on your shores, then laying me down beneath your soft waters, smoothing my soul. Lake, beat me with your waters, whip me with your tides, subtle and slow, chasing the moon's pull, wanting to be an ocean, reflecting every image before you, hot pink soft fire early morning sunrise, or shimmering diamonds on black velvet abyss of 2 a.m. darkness. I come into you, and you accept me without question, lifting me on your waves of joy. We ride each other through the storms. Lake, you do not tell of your secret shipwrecks. So many crying on your shores have caused you to rise. You hold my tears in your body. You are full from so much weeping. You do not easily give up your dead. I am here for you now, Lake. Take me to your belly. Grind me with your stones. Never let me go. From Screws Fall Out. What is it with love? What is it with love? The touch, fingers on skin, lips, gentle, joined, the flame of emotional surrender, the waking and naked happiness. What is it with love? The ability to endure bad breath, personality conflicts, folding daily drivel into mutual admiration. What is it with love that drives us, that pilots the course across rough seas, knowing in our soul the storm will subside and bring us to a calm shore? This thing, this emotion, this beast that dines on our force of life, controlling our future, setting our past in sandy foundations. Yet, we long for its touch, its promise of euphoria, giving way to reason, we surrender to the moment, to the belief in a comfort of an embracing womb. It pulls us in and we accept. Let it flow through you. Cast aside the fear, cherish the moment. Which ones were those? Uh, the one about being a prophet and the one that was nope. a schizophrenic or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you have. I can't, can't do the prophet. I'm not going to do any from book nine until I finish it now. Uh, sure. Scatter splatter. Scatter splatter. Always a favorite. Oh, yeah. So that's also in. Uh, pull tabs and other things to stick your fingers through, which I have copies in lovely uh, paper bag stock. Awesome. It'll also be in a future series, CCD, 2014, somewhere. Scatter Splatter. This is my war protest song from uh, university times. Schizophrenic proverb, love has hate written all over it. The news of the day is the war is all over and arm sales are up, a big profit in prosthetics. Kitty cat outside my window roaring into the night loud. It cries, the crickets and the frogs and nature itself is drowned out by the hum of my wind machine fan. Pushing and pushing those molecules of air around. Pushing and pushing with the sound of an airplane's propeller flying like birds or dragonflies fly. High in the air with no one there to steer, just roaring into the night. With a payload of weapons gonna make the news today, national and international, everyone will see it. Every 30 minutes. I killed them all. I killed everyone all at once. Now roll those cameras. And the police beat me after they killed the cat in my front yard. It posed a threat. It was in the way of the wheels of justice, so they say. Then I told them, you'll never take me alive. The war is over and I have stock and prosthetics. And I demand justice and you better read me my rights before and during my beating. Please let me sign something important after my fingers are broken. By the way, cop, don't trip over the fan cord. Hey, leave this noose around my neck. I don't care if it is the flag. It should symbolize my freedom to hang myself with it. What do you mean I'm on drugs? I am not. I'm a decent American citizen. I pay my taxes. I watch the news and all the hip sitcoms. And of course, all those persuasive commercials in between. I don't need drugs. Not e 
Not when I have this great entertainment. What do you mean I'm not making sense? Of course I'm not making sense. You don't want me to make sense. Ignorance is bliss, and this is a schizophrenic proverb. First, there is waking up. Realization of a new day, beauty, or tragedy, not knowing. The sun is not shining yet. There is a bird on the ledge. First, there is coffee, and more coffee, with a chocolate strip scone. The fog is on the road this morning. More construction, always more construction. First, there is hearing sounds, indistinguishable sounds, then a brightness, then the outline of a face, or shoulder, or hip. It's raining on the road today. Windshield wipers are so inadequate. All is good if everyone keeps in their lane. Just keep in your lane until the rain subsides. First, there is a smile with sleepy eyes above, hair shielding cheeks from sun. Then the sensation of touch, fingertips soft on warm skin. Then there is holding tight, tight enough to remain through the day. Then. There are cries of realization, weaning anxiety, letting go is part of love. First, there is coffee with a blueberry scone, and stoplights, stop signs, brake lights, heavy traffic, rushing, rushing, always rushing. The rain has stopped. There is a mist on the highway this morning, toll booths, correct change, and exit ramps. First, there is the scent of hair, followed by the scent of skin. There are legs entwined, palm flat on the small of a back. There is pulling closer and pulling closer still, readjusting bodies while readjusting lives. First, there is waking up. From my first book, uh, 100 Haiku for Lucille, with some other poems, a uh, number between one and 100. 34. If chance is all that, could. Oh, if chance is all that, could bring one to another, then why do we love? And what did you say, Janet? 80? 88. 88. That was survey. Survey says 88. I know you'd read them before, and I asked for hundreds the last month. I could not dive deep when the time came to drive deep. Another failure. Oh, yeah. uh, another number? 53. 53. 53. Burn the candle bright. Worry not about the flame, for soon all will die. The Smiths are still with me. Johnny Marr played guitar, Morrissey sang the tunes. We stayed up late, feeling great, dancing under maudlin moons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey. Okay, one more. Sure. Okay. Nothing is everything. On the porch, my hands are cold, driven by the thought, the feeling of my thumb on your ear, fingers touching the nape of your neck. We eat and drink and share ourselves open. This is where foundations are laid. Your hand in mine, under the blanket, fingers dovetail to comfort. This is comfort, satisfaction, simplicity, hand in hand, feet wrapped in a subtle braid. I rest my head on your bosom. You pet my head, we relax. An evening spent doing nothing is everything. Awesome. 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 All right, uh, water 
Firefly Press, uh, soon to publish Janet. I have my own books, uh, obviously. And they look so cool! And, and yeah. Give it up for Patrick Riley! And that'll be cool. And I've been collecting paper bags I have. And I've been trying to find stores that didn't have as much print on the paper bags so that you'd have more stuff. Because I always go to Woodman's and they're like, I'll just splatter all sorts of ink all over it. I'm like, Jules, just a little line, you're awesome. But you have to figure out where to go to grocery shop to base your chapbook <laughs> covers on. Um, in the meantime, I think I would like to hear from Jerry Pendergast. Jerry, get off of my darling. Woo! Did you actually? I don't think it was loud enough. Come on, give it up for Jerry. Come on, yeah. Did this be a special feature in July? July, July, July 16th. 16th. July 16th. Oak to an oak tree, Warren Park, early 70s. I stand in front of you, barefoot, arms outstretched. It's early dusk. I absorb your greenness with eyes, breath, listen to leaves lightly riffling while you photosynthesize. I dig my feet into the ground. Can I connect your roots to my nerve endings? A civic lesson in three voices. I sit. I know do Zen. Zen foreign religion. I call my rep on my cell phone in my yard near the border. I sent him an email last week. I cite the law, demand larger patrols, more raids. Officers should ask for documents anytime they hear a question answered C or see dark faces in the wrong zone after working hours. I'm sorry, I should have said specifically part one. This is part two. Two. What doc you meant? I was born in this town. I don't go to docs. I have no health insurance. But I sometimes work at docs as a day laborer. My father planted the tree you sit under to call and text, sip your drink. But my zone is more arid, though we share the first three numbers. City plants no trees on our streets, paves them infrequently. Three, I hope I can explain the 0701 special at our blue corn restaurant. It includes a mix of corn from saved seeds that my family has grown north of your town before oceans rose, covered islands. The number is 1070 reversed. The number of a bill called Safe Neighborhoods. Gaps. In London, they say, mind the gap. Warning riders about the space between the train and the platform. Commercials used to sing, fall into the gap. <laughs> Passing a gap outlet, I think of the gap between labor costs and the garment workers' wages. Should I adore the maquilas where gap clothing is spun? Should I adore the offices where Gap commercials are spun? I remember slanting, shifting into Gaps on the line of scrimmage for stunts, blitzes, goal line defenses called shooting the Gaps. A mannequin in the window models pre-ripped jeans. I think of someone restitching, patching a rip from a fall or holes from a time for or holes from long time wear and wash. Will the maquila worker mannequin ever model jeans 
with bullet holes, punishment for organizing to narrow the gap between her life and the Maquila owners, and the Gap Board of Directors with regrets of the incident. Will we see a surgeon mannequin trying to close the wound in dim lighting? I know it's cold and rainy tonight, but uh, I wrote this in mid-July. It's called Mid-Evening. Mid-July. Cool and overcast. Wind silent. Ground wet. From intermittent light rain. Loud cicada ostinata. Birds chirping in a few bars. Between children shouting and laughing and a couple across the, the yard across the street and a couple arguing a few doors south of my living room window. <laughs> this is called um, from a time photograph for Catherine Mayberry. Nuclear breakdown, psychic maze, walking through your backyard. Was it easy to smile? Your shadowed side turned toward Three Mile Island. Lit side contemplates daughter in arms. Will the blanket be enough? It's never enough. Are <laughs> um, yeah, um, we on time here? Oh, all right, you probably have five minutes to go, Angel. You're fine. Okay, this is called a table at a college reunion. I kind of tweaked it, but most of it, uh, most of this was written by a much younger man. A table at a college reunion. They're passing around photographs of landscapes and flushscapes, re-sculpted by life since graduation. They're trying to talk away 25 years of facial crevices and belly hills. Summaries of promotions, acquisitions, children's achieve achievements roll from tongues with memories of games, concerts, demonstrations. Laments for the homecoming queen found dead after a party in a network executive's mansion. Cerebral cameras, microphones pan backwards, chasing scenes from late night discussions, utopian blueprints spoken, a few also written, snatched away like a moleta from a charging bowl. Oh. That was awesome. This was written by an old man fairly recently. <laughs> it's called Memory Jogged. Thoughts roam across state lines, hearing a town mentioned, the going out of business bookstore, a block from the golden symbol, come into focus with the name of the sax player, the solo that shifted heads, eyes from the sidewalk scene outside the front window to the stage. Stop some talk a table away about a call in a Little League game. Vocalists scatting, blending in with servers' voices and shouts from the crowd. do one more. This is called Correcting a Poem. Okay, yeah. okay never mind. I'll do Highway Poem. <laughs> it's only half of them. I have two pages. And now I brought them. All right. Sorry. You can do a nice lot, but you're more than welcome to it. Whatever you like. Okay. Highway Poem. Two lanes late afternoon, fog farming, flatlands turning into slopes, deer crossing signs, no crossing guards for them. I say to an, an imaginary passenger, foggy dusk, I slow down, just a shadow, or was it? Look for a second, like a legendary lost woman. Lived in a town nearby, I heard, her height and hair color changed with the decades. Oh, wow. You're awesome. And then you're rushing to say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.
Jerry. Sorry, I no. lost page two when I was getting ready to come. Where'd it go? Where'd it yeah. Page two. Where's the infamous page two? <laughs> but that's awesome, and thank you very much. And I've been so like scatterbrained because normally when I've got a scheduled feature, I'm like. Oh, wow, well, we've got to collect money for them. And I'm like, oh, I guess my feature's not going. We don't have to worry about it. I'm like, wait a minute. The man that was supposed to be a feature in February is here now. And this man deserves it because he's going to have lots of space. I see Lynn. I see her. And I'm going to let Bobster go and then Lynn because we're just closing stuff out and then I'll have a thing. And so, hi, you relax and get ready to read because Bobster will go and then you. I should be like, poet on deck is. Hi, I'm all right. Um, so what I'm doing is sh showing my groovy little bag because although this wasn't the technical feature that was supposed to be here for the evening, um, Tom Curry, poetry, the ma poetry himself, aka James is here, so I'm like, let me see what kind of money I have and I'm gonna stuff it in a bag and I'm gonna go around and harangue you because this man will deserve it, I swear to God, because he was really a phenomenal reader. I love hearing him perform. So I'm gonna get up, start, I'm get up early now for him because I didn't get a chance to before this is so awesome. And so, I am going to ask the Bobster to come up for a reading, and then I will say that, where did she go? Well, <laughs> you're coming up, like, you're coming up, and I'll gotta close it up, and we'll take a break before a feature. Give it up for the Bobster again. Yay, I'm still like that right now. This is from Chicago Calling 2013 in collaboration with Mr. Tony Renner. This is called Out of the Frying Pan, Don Van Vliet. Necessity is the mother of invention. The captain had a problem. He had rhyme and verse all jumbled up in his veins, begging for release, for mercy. So he set them free. They ran and ran. And they came upon bacon, bacon and eggs. Too much salt, too much salt. They got too much salt and that made them halt. They got too much salt and they had to halt. Tong tong, kang a trong. I got a big bang, bing bong, long song. I got to keep playing on. I got to keep grooving with Don. Abba zabba, big a babu. He's out there laughing at me and you. One more from the major poetry renegade Stuart C. Perkoff. It's called The Suicide Room. I have within the head a room of death, brown walls, the death of spring, a vague breath of sea smell, a ring of knives of every kind circling a centered mat. The failing lives to be accompanied by flat drums, dove cooing horns, plucked strings. The supplicant comes. He sits upon the mat. Attendants bring paper and pen. He wills his philosophy to the world and binds his eyes and blind, he dies. This is the room I go to when my mind extends no further than its hidden doom. I weld the music and the knives into a power over deaths. I leave the dead within this room when I have held power for long enough to go beyond the point beyond which one cannot possibly go. Thank you. And now there's two from me. Yeah. Two more from me, I should say. Okay, effort and struggle. This was the epigraph for this was written by our very own Dana German. And it's also based on the movie Fight Club, for anybody who happens to have seen that. If there are voices, think of something else they could be saying. Tyler Durden disappears in a hall of mirrors. I am left behind again, his poker face like the Cheshire Cat's grin, no longer there to gaze upon. The chips are down and I'm alone with just myself. Why does he keep excluding me from all the bloody revelry? I keep tracking him, stalking through the freeze of night. The city is cold and sequestered apart, but I look and follow and listen for the beat. How I need you, Tyler Durden. How I must have you for a companion in order to feel that there's a me. 
I have resolved to take this debris, this speck of dirt, this torn leather glove, this well of disarray, and turn it into treasures. Thanks. This last one is based on a play by Jessica Goldberg, which I saw in its Midwest premiere at uh, the Poor Theater at Rivendell. It's called Good Thing. Good Thing, where have you gone? I came back to claim you for my own, but all you did was throw me a party. Your way of saying, welcome back, baby. You grab your newborn son to your bosom. Can't you see he's slipping out of your grasp? Let him loose, damn it. In the process of becoming. Becoming who? Who gave you this unexpected gift? Look at her. Look at her. Don't you see anything? Oh, oh, come on now. There has to be a way to make you see that that tiny gift is not yours. It cries out for my long-lost mother. The love that can't be replaced. Not ever. Not ever again. Thank you. Thank you, you're welcome. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a And this is what is the awesomest thing about this evening because what are odd confluence events we've got going on with the crappy weather, but with the change of the features and with mini feature night, it's like everybody's got a mini feature and we have a feature. And yeah, it's just blowing my mind. And that is why I'm really looking forward to hearing what this woman's going to come up with. Please, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Lynn West. Dramatic than me, I say. It's the only woman ever. Hello, no way. More dramatic. There's no competition to you, woman. You have got it all inside out, upside down, and any way. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'd like to start with a song for you from Evita. I had to let it happen, I had to change, couldn't stay all my life down at heel, looking out of the window and staying out of the sun, so I chose freedom, running around trying everything new, but nothing impressed me at all. I never expected it to. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is I never left you. All through my wild days, my mad existence, I kept my promise. Don't keep your distance and ask for fortune and ask for fame. I never invited them in, though it seemed to the world they were all I desired. They are illusions, they are not the solutions they promised to be. The answer was here all the time. I love you and hope you love me. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is I never left you. All through my wild days, my mad existence, I kept my promise, don't keep your distance. Have I said too much? There's nothing left that I can say to you. But all you have to do is look at me to know that every word is true. Uh, ah, yes, Evita. Uh, yeah. And 
And now, I uh, don't know what I'd like to read, but this is my, my first book of verse. And there are numbers from one to... Pick a number. Yeah, pick a number. That's what I'm going to do here. From one to... La, 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 la. La, 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 la. Oh, to 93. 22. 22. Okay, 22 is God calls. You must take every gift as it is given. There will be many gifts. Stay true to me always because I am truth and love. My ways you may not understand, but stay true as I love you more than you can comprehend. Accept my love and love as I did. Do not resist my love or my gifts. I want your burdens to be light. You do not know how to carry them. You are not made to. I have done that for you. Trust in me. Let life happen and look for good and love. Stand strong in your talent and see good and love in all. That's 22. I'm not giving him another number. Give him another number. Another number? 37. 37. Okay, 37. Thank you, Bob. 37. Go to heaven? <laughs> I don't know. See, you made me promises, or so I thought. It was so clear, the picture in my mind. But focus blurred changed. Where is the picture? Can it keep changing? How can I recognize the image? Am I blind? I can't see it. That's 37. Thank you. Any other numbers between 1 and what did I say? 62. 62 going once, going twice. 62 goes to the highest Bitter, 58, 60, 60, 60, unite, oh, that's 50 United States from 13 original colonies. Okay, giving in. Leave it all, you're good at the religious ones here this evening. Leave it all at the foot of the cross I am, trying to find heaven too, amidst the crossed lines of rationality. We try to put together some sense. Trust is lost. What? Trust is lust. What is lust? The gusto that makes us human? I am in a cocoon of transition. The will of God must be stronger. As the love comes tumbling down, the walls of resistance fall. The surrender is inevitable because we all are here to learn love and grow. I don't write too many religious poems. Uh, but I said, uh, you, you, you yes, it must be the God speaking. So, the once 87. 7? 87. 87. Okay. Let's see. 87. All right, son. Young man. The young man across the street bounces the ball with cap on his head. Nineteen is all. Dad loves him. Mother tired, gone. Bounce, bounce. Drugs in him, all prescribed to fix it. The rage and confusion of the world. Just sleep and bounce the ball. I've talked to him, been intrigued, not seen anything wrong. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Meds help. Motivation. <laughs> okay, numbers. The numbers game. The numbers. I hate to do this. 88. 88. Okay, well, yeah, that's easy. Then I just have to be right that's here. Me. Truth. Oh, excuse me. Come closer, old friend. Rub seductively against my soul. 
tiptoe with toes of steel, the warm feeling waiting to be thrown to hell, walk the line between freedom and bondage, good and evil, repression or freedom, freedom to love, feel joy and be alive. <laughs> yeah, I know, I just love joy, being alive. That's what I do. Okay, oh, this is, I, can I read this one? This is kind of, of this is kind of racy, and I don't know, it's like, hell is nothing. Not that there's anything wrong with it, let me say. Okay, Popsicle, the luscious pink of your long, hard surface caresses my tongue. I feel a chill that goes through me and delights. Flavors of youth tempt me. Good humor on a summer day, on a hot summer day. Um, that's the popsicles, yes. Does anybody <laughs> remember the good humor man? Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, running for a popsicle. Oh my god. So wonderful. Um, numbers, anybody? Let me give her a number. 67. 67. Okay, that number. I've, uh, that number means something somewhere. Um, here we go. 67. Humpty Dumpty. As the king's horses and men try to put him back together again, he twiddles his thumbs. The action of the amusement brings him to his old friend, Tom Thumb, the piper's son. He goes there, knocks on the door, and is brought back to the music of life. <laughs> You. Any others? Anybody want to ask me for another number, please? Uh, 57. 57. Hey, that's a good number. 57. A good year. Yeah, it is. It was a very good year. It was a very good year. Become River. Continuing in a leisurely fashion, you stroll across a lovely day. Your cool fingers caress the bed below and refresh life. I watch you with the warmth of springtime on my back and go with you steady, purposefully forward. We curl along the countryside together, grounded in Mother Earth. Then, by surprise, the pace quickens, the comforting calm is interrupted by a bed of nightmares. My river tears me across the rocks of hell, turning on me. Its long body meets the fangs of life as it snakes and threatens to destroy. But I am the river, and the snake has no power over me. I continue on the path, laughing at the serpent. Riding to my heart's content. Any? I was to say it's over ten, and if you have a short one, you want to close it out with? Uh, uh, a short one, maybe just a, a little bit of a, I, I don't know, a song. Um, maybe not. <laughs> Chicory, chick, chilla, chilla, chuckle, Romeo, you know my medica. Balaka, walaka, can't you see? Chicory, chick is me. Nosey, no, nosey, no, and little hands, the ivy. Thank you. A good old ivy, too. With you? Of course I would. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, it's this bizarro evening of many features and a feature night, and I have no idea where the little handy dandy bag is or if everybody has received it because I can't go da 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 and, and show the bag off to everybody or not. Um, but I was reading other things from other people before, and I was going to end the evening with. Uh, reading a few pieces of my own and I thought I'm gonna find something a bunch of older stuff that I haven't read for this open mic at its older venues in forever or ever and so I thought I'd pull out a book 
and it actually was originally based on the issue of CCD, volume 57. It says, oh, you don't mean, this can't actually be true. Finally, literature for the snotty and elite. <laughs> That's what the cover is for this, which I think is funny. So I was going to read some pieces out of this, and I thought I would start with one that last was read, I believe, by Jeff Helgeson at Cafe Baloo. Um, this is a piece called The Page, and dedicated to inspiration. This is the page. And you would appear, appear in the paper I held in my hand, rippling waves in the paper, the pages before me, a dorsal fin on a shark circling on my neck, my head, watching its prey. I would touch that page and still feel the rose that I threw over the mahogany box in the November cold. The grass covered with ice, crackling every time I took a step toward you. I could feel that pain in that paper, and I could still feel the cold marble freezing my fingers, and the etched message in the stone would still take hold of me the way you did. All I had to do was look at your writing and feel the blood rush, feel your breath on my neck, feel that fist jumping out from the paper and hitting me in the face. I could feel it. I could feel a thousand wars fought and won in your pages, in your words. I could feel your hot breath pushing up against my neck. I could feel your hands taking my shoulders and throwing me back in my chair. I could look at your paper and see my own, see my own window as I looked out of it and see the masses rising, rioting in the streets. I can feel the tide rising from your thoughts. What do you possess? What is giving you this power to give you such a gift? I, I look at your page and I begin to feel your hand from under those pages. And they're trying, actually reaching from under that desk, desperately trying to grip out to, you know, with, at my hand through that desk, razor in hand shoving through those pages, slicing through that air, trying desperately to get to me. I get up from my chair, walk over to the bathroom, almost like memorization. I feel nothing but the drive you left. In the mirror, there are cuts on my face. Knocking things over. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Make sure remember all your pages. I was trying. I know. I'm like, well, like I've got these all. All right, now I've got two here that are about a relationship, and they're short. Uh, this is called "Who You Tell Your Dreams To." We were driving from down the freeway, you and me and your girlfriend. And your girlfriend was in between in this pickup truck where you could move that gear shift and it would mean so much to you. And you saw something that you thought was beautiful. And you said, look at the lines, look at how it was made. And you were inspired by the beauty of an everyday object that no one else noticed. And your girlfriend, riding in the middle, said, that's him. People think he's crazy. And I thought, no, it just depends on who you tell your dreams to. But I couldn't say it in the truck. I wouldn't say it. Sure. I thought it was good to follow it with this one because it shares the you and me and your girlfriend line. This one's titled, You and Me and Your Girlfriend. <laughs> How fitting, yeah. <laughs> you and me and your girlfriend. We went out for drinks together, you and me and your girlfriend, to a restaurant in Malibu with a balcony that hung over the water. Had a perfectly lovely time, you and me and your girlfriend, talking about life, catching up, and you suggested that we go out on the balcony. 
And I thought that that would be charming for you and me and your girlfriend. But we hadn't paid our bill yet, so your girlfriend told us to come on out there without her. We stood outside, leaned down the rail, you and me, listened to the way water crash on the rocks below us, and we talked. But now it wasn't about catching up, you and me. It was about ideas, dreams, plans. And before I knew it, we'd been out there for nearly an hour. And I said, oh, 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 what about your girlfriend? She was waiting out there for us. And you said, oh yeah, and didn't move an inch. I'm looking for orders for things. This, um, if people, well, I don't know if people know, but this is a piece called My Mother, My Mother, My Mother. Yeah. We went to go see my mother this weekend. You see, my mother has cancer, and we decided to go across the country for a weekend to surprise her to see how she was doing. And it was breast cancer, so it really wasn't that big of a scenario, I suppose. So I managed to put it out of my mind until we actually had to fly there. The night before, I couldn't bring myself to pack. It was two in the morning when I finally pulled my suitcase out from my pantry shelf. I kept telling people at work, well, you see, I have to go visit my mother because she has cancer, so I have to miss a few days of work. But I was able to say so matter-of-factly until I actually had to visit her. In fact, when my sisters told me about the diagnosis, it was right around Christmas time, and there was so much work to do, and I had presents to wrap and a meal to prepare, and Christmas was supposed to be a happy time that I managed to postpone even thinking about it until I decided until we decided to surprise her for a visit. And then I had to pack to decide what to take, what to leave behind, put my life into a little black box with a handle and wheels and go. It shouldn't be like this, and I knew that. I knew that I shouldn't be visiting my mother under these circumstances, and I knew that she wouldn't would ever want to think about bad things when, and because things would always make her cry if they were bad, and this would just make her want to cry and cry because the only reason why we're there is because things are bad. But I wasn't supposed to think that way. Things would be just fine. So I finished packing at like four in the morning, and the next thing I remember is that I was on the plane with my sisters, cracking jokes as we picked up our rental car, and then we got to see mom and dad's house and actually get there. And everyone was so happy to see each other. It was like one big family reunion, and we were all laughing and talking and trying to figure out where everyone was going to sleep. And the sisters and dad walked into the front room to see if the couches were good enough to sleep on or if we'd have to get one of those air mattresses. And then I was alone in the den with mom. So I suddenly became serious and I sat down next to her and I asked her how she was really doing. And that's when she started to cry, saying that the cancer spread. But what she was most concerned with was the fact that she didn't want to upset and spoil the time that we came to see her. <laughs> but what I don't think she understood was that we couldn't have come at a better time and nothing she could do would spoil our trip. Oh. Um. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I think I've got one more. Yes, I do, because it's goofy. Um, this one is Transcribing Dreams. This makes me think of the days of the early days with the... Uh, um, Cafe Aloha, David Rubin reading out his dream stuff, but, and it was probably when I did that in that first year in 97 or something. This is one of those dream poems. This is Transcribing Dreams 3. <laughs> I was walking into the living room, and there was this 10-gallon fish tank there. You had just bought it. You were looking at the fish. That's when I walked over. And then I saw a shark fish in the tank. What about eight inches long, and he was at the bottom, killing and eating a four-inch fish. There were other one-inch fish swimming along the top, neon tetras, small things. 
and I walked over, and the shark was just eating this four-inch fish, and soon he just completely eaten it. It was completely gone. And you were just looking. You couldn't believe that you could do nothing to save this fish. And then another four-inch fish came out of hiding from behind a plant and the left side of the t plant tank. And he darted around. It looked like he was in a state of panic. Maybe he breathed the blood of his other four-inch fish, his ally, his family. And he started darting around some more. And then the shark was just sitting there at the bottom of the tank. And the other fish kept, fish kept darting. And then the shark opened his mouth. And in a darting panic, the four-inch fish swam straight into the shark's mouth. All it had to do was close his mouth and swallow the fish whole. There was no fight like with the first one. There was no struggle. And I looked over at you, and you were amazed that the shark just ate your two fish, which probably cost over $10 each, and that they just didn't get along in the tank with each other. And I looked at the tank, and I saw those one-inch neon tetras darting along the top of the water. They knew they'd be victims later, trapped in this little cage, and the shark would just wait until he was bored, until he administered his punishment. And I wanted to ask why you bought all of these different sized fish and expected them to get along and live together peacefully. I mean, maybe you didn't realize that the shark would need more food than he was prepared to buy them. Besides, a shark of that size shouldn't even be alone in a tank that small, as small as 10 gallons. He needs room to grow. But before I could say anything, I saw the shark swim to the top of the water push his head and nose out of the top of the water, open the lid of the top of the aquarium. You weren't looking, so I told you to look at the top, but, but not to get too close. And the shark just sat there looking at you as if he wanted you to know what a good eater he was. It was almost as if he was looking to you for approval. Thank you very much. I have to see my time. Um, we have, I, I don't know how many minutes this man has. Does Poetry himself need a break before he comes up here, or would he like to come up right away? Here, call. I want to hear it out from you. Oh, well, then I can't even like work and get an awesome, incredible introduction for this man because I would have had the most awesome thing for him when he was coming up in September. But please, ladies and gentlemen, the feature we should have always had a lot. Give it up for poetry himself. Come on up and love. How are everybody doing? Awesome. Woo! Hi. As I sit on the blocks watching pain goes by, her night train drinker drinks his life away. The liquor stores outlines, the corner stores outrage. Her million people's out there screaming, say we can't take this no more. Her block is in pain. The kids is out here crying, asking why. It's still bitter and sad. So we cries out and I sat. Hat tucked down lows and sadness. Hoodies on the side of the head. ATM machines going office. They enraged. They don't know what's going on. See, they enraged. That's my first piece, y'all. Uh -huh. yeah. wow. Young lady sits on the corner asking why. That she got to go through this problem that she been through. The society. The church lies, got her dip in the cries and acts awry. She addicted to this link card. Cry. So she cries out. Bigger blocks realize to, bigger blocks that realize that she got little kids at home. So she works the corners at night just to get the ends meet so she can bring home to the kids. So she cries out. Her mamas and daddies is asking that she ain't gonna never be nothing. Kids is crying out when daddy coming home and acts awry. She don't know why. So she goes to church open that things can get better. So she find herself late night, Saturday night, drinking her pain away. 
drinking too much pain away. Where the kids is running around, they don't know which way is going away. The kids out there with a diaper so full, no much pain. They said they only would know when daddy's coming home, then know what to blame. So she flips up on the corner selling bootlegs and asks her why. That she addicted to this five day hustle that she acts cries out, bitters inside. She never goes, so she goes through a deep depression. May have kids out there locked in DLC cage, cage up like a cage. I mean, she asks why, so she cries out each day. That's the second piece. My pillow has been willow. Why she do me this way? All I seen was a picture from her face. Yo, my pillow has been willow. Why she do me this way? All I seen was a picture from her face. As I locked up in cell cage, animals locked up in the pain. All I could see was the pillow that she laid there and sighed and said that she was deep in love while she was going out with my best friend and asked her why. Said the love was the lust and just feeling the sad. She feeling the same pain. All I could think about the cry that she told me that's the thing that she told me that she loved me. How, how this thing that I had was a love zone for her made me cry each day. Made me work the pain. Made me take care of the bills. Made me take acts and ride while she jumping in cars and See, she cries all in the pillar every night. See, she acts why, why she shapes in the bed like an S, and she acts why that this pain is getting bitter inside this. So she cries out. So she ain't never been in love before. She ain't never met a man, but she be hurting the same man. When she find that same love, she be hurting the same game that she been through. Cries out inside as she lays up on that pillow with different lies inside says she looking for a good man but she hurting inside so every man that comes her way that she hurts inside so every man that comes their way she been hurts inside so she hurts inside that's that piece y'all oh. i'm trying to figure out i got one more you got no you can do it as long as you like my angel and we just sort of like this at the end oh my god that was awesome okay awesome. uh Life is getting closer to the edge. I don't know which way I'm going to go. See, Daddy got me going through things I ain't never seen before. Why? Did Daddy pick up that pipe and blow his mind away? Daddy went through things he ain't never seen before, so he blows his same mind with the same pain inside. And asked him why? Why did Daddy got to drink some more? Because Mama was going off and, see, Mama was going off because... Mama wanted things to be better and sad. See, Mama had a one night stand. Leads up to the nights and stand. Leads into Daddy having a heart attack. Leads into a blame or feel of pain inside her. Addicted with an itch inside him, so he blames inside his eyes. Clothes outside. Said the black t shirt that was wearing that he could feel the same pain inside. So ask why that everything could be so bitter and sad that society is built with so much pain and sad that we go through. Depression, people is going through bipolar and different things. People is going off. The city of Chicago is as a ride that we got to be so much bitter and sad after we walk down the same neighborhood and now the handshake goes by. And daddy said the heart attack that I shook and mama was got me going crazy. The night train that I was drinking, mama was got me going crazy. That's that piece, y'all. Oh. So I see that I got one more piece. Keep going. You, I was going to say, if you have the room have for it, you, if feature. you got room for a feature, you okay. are a fourth of the way through it, my love. Okay. All right. Give me a suit and a tie. I can make it better. Give me a suit and a tie, I can make it better. I'm in church just trying to get the word. A suit and a tie, some shoes, I can make it better. But instead, I get judged because I'm wearing Timberlands and a pair of hoodies, and they say it ain't better. They say everything that you do ain't going through the same pain, and everything that you see ain't better than what you've been. <laughs> same eyes. Close out. Never forget the pain that I ran through. 
Why well, come and speak words that can't ever get me better? See, they told me that I could never do the things that I never did. A cell phone rings off. Girl on the other line. So I could get the better. Just give me the suit and tie. I can make it better. That's that piece. It was February the 19th. My brother was coming home. We had celebration that I never bring home. Five, six gunshots fires off. I seen he wanted down the block in the pain. Mama crying tears, say, oh, they just my baby just gone. Never forget what we came home. The drinks that surprised him by the bloom like surrounded by the crystal night. It was just a one fight, a tactics, motion, motion detectors going off. Mama's in deep cries. So I can't even talk to her because she just lost her baby and I can't even talk to her. I just lost my brother and I can't even talk to her. No more pain. The much hate that we feel inside, I had to let it go. And Mama was sitting there with tears crying, wondering when things was going to get better. So brother been locked up in jail cell and just going back to, back to the cage animals like there was no things that could bring her pain inside. But Mama was crying tears. I was thinking of just the loved one that she felt that, see, he was the better one and I wasn't that one. Is it because of that she feel that ain't no better? Now she's going through a deep thing of depression and I can't even help her. Because she still remember the eyes of her baby boy. Tears, eyes, try to cry. No much drinks and pain can't even take her away that she's flying deep inside. So I can't take her away from this depression that we feel inside. Her eyes are so cold. Shuts out. She only thing she want to do is drink out. She can't holler out, so she screams out every now and then that's, man, I miss my baby son, because I can't even go in the wind. I can't even think about the better things. And see, the memories got her going through teardrops and eyes. I can't even cry at the same tears, because I don't even know what she feels inside. See, the pain that she's bitter inside, I can't even know, because all I could do is mama say, I'm trying inside to feel what you're going through, but I can't even touch you inside because you got much love for him inside. So I don't even know what I'm going through inside. So I feel it's better things and memories that got me celebration, good times. And see, it can bring back them hook, them hook lines. See, as we could throw back Christmas times and Thanksgiving, the New Year's ball drops in. We could bring back the first champagne that you would pour into the last cup and. See, things could get the better. See, the tear drops, Mom. I remember them was good joys and joy drops. And please, we could remember the times when Daddy used to come home late at night. No, a fight, no attacks and peace. Don't get bitter, Mom. The tears is much better than what you feel inside. See, the little, little dreams that you feel inside. See, I still remember my big brother when he was running deep inside. See, them tear drops, Mom. You said, Mom, baby, baby boy is gone inside. You and Mama carrying him from nine months, Mama. And I can feel what you feel inside, see. But I can't really go and do what you're going to do, see. As your tear drops drink, Mama, and I just try to knock that beer outside your hand because you going through gout and high blood and depression. But the doctor told you not to drink, but he don't even know what's inside you, Mama. You're going through a hate feeling of loss of your baby boy inside, see. You carry him from nine months, see. And I can feel that the hurt that you feel inside is much better than this. How she rocking back and forth. And her mama, the people can say that you're going crazy. But I can see the memories of you saying that you're seeing ghosts inside. The pressure that you're seeing, that you're seeing ghosts inside, mom. And you realize the tear drop that you feel. And say, James, I never told you this, but I love you deep inside. Because I feel that you was better than things that you ever seen. But I said the tough love to make you stronger. So the tear drops that made me realize that my baby boy ain't inside. See, mama, the tear drops is bitter inside. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, my God. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see. It's hard with no paper. Oh. I got this girl. I don't know how to take it. 
We was first in love, but I don't know how we gonna make it. I'm trying to write her a letter, tell her I don't feel the same guy. Please, I'm not a drinker, but you about to make me one. So don't take me there to that next level. Please don't bring me that drama, cause she ain't that better. How you gonna feel inside then when the cries is going out? You say I love hugs and shakes and shakes and handshakes and the things that we used to do, but I don't feel that inside. Cause your fussing got me sober things, man. I'm feeling like I'm going crazy inside. Man, I realize that the sunglasses and the darkness, and you say you used to get your hair done, but you didn't feel off. Cries inside. Say that you love me, but the next minute you hate me. Say that you want to make me, but you can't imitate me. Take me through the society that the block is bigger than this. Let me hold your hands and let me tell you that the true love is love than this. Said she can't. Because what she ain't, she ain't. She said we fell in like that, but then we got to family ties and realized that we've been hating inside. Hating inside. Yes, I got the empty feel with the with peoples I run away from. The pain that I feel, I just run away from. I can't even talk to you, so I write you a letter. And I won't see your tear drops, so I just write you a letter, say it's gonna be better inside. You ever been to that place? You just write a letter and just run away. See, I can't take that. See, she gonna tell me to stay, but I can't even make that. See, I can't even realize I just wanna run away from this. Please, somebody give me a shot of Hennessy with a coat. <laughs> this girl got me going crazy. <laughs> uh, to change your life. If I had 15 minutes to change my life, I would have did the things that I didn't do. I would have did the things I didn't do to make it better inside. See, I would have wiped down the New Year's dropping, please. Don't stop no pain dropping. I would have told my brother that my life wasn't like that and you could be better. I would have told mama you was the goodest mama in the life. I would have told daddy I'm making things bigger than life. Stop. Spitting words bigger than this. I would have told that the job wasn't. I would have stayed in school and be better than what I've been. 15 minutes to change my life. I would have took the steps that made me better than what I am. I would have stayed through life crushed and in <laughs> and out. Say it again. If you can remember it, that's totally I would have stayed through life through in and through out. The times that when the worst was harder and the hard was the worst and the pain was the pain, I would have stayed through it. I could take that. So I tapped 15 minutes to change my life and it could get better than this. <coughs> That's it, y'all. What an intriguing change of events. A guy that couldn't make it for a feature before shows up for a guy that couldn't make it for a feature now. But uh, um, Because we have a few minutes left and I just thought I'd grab it. Whoop, I'll just throw that Stella coaster anywhere. Um, I was going to read one from this and it's a long one. Some of you may have heard it or not. I have no idea how this will go, but I hope you appreciate this emotional piece. It's called Everything Was Alive and Dying. I had a dream the other night. I walked out of the city to a forest and the streets were neatly paved with bicycle paths and there were trash cans every 50 feet and trash every 10. And there was a raccoon. She came right up to me. She had a few little baby raccoons following her. It was so cute. I wish I had my camera. 
And she spoke to me. And she said, thank you. Thank you for not buying furs. I know you humans are pretty smart. You've got to be able to figure out a way to keep yourselves warm without killing me. And I said, you know, they don't do it for warmth. They do it for fashion. They do it for power. And she said, I know, but thank you anyway. And then I walked a little further, and there was a stray cat. And she still had her little neon collar on with a little bell. And she walked a few feet, and she stretched her front paws. Oh, she looked so adorable. And then she walked up right up to me, and she said, Thank you. And I said, For what? And then she looked at me for a moment, and her little ears were sticking straight up. And she said, in some countries, I'm considered a delicacy. Yeah. And I said, ha, 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 how do you know of these things? And she said, when somebody eats one of you, word gets around. And then she just looked at me for another moment, and then she said, and in some countries, the cow is sacred. Wouldn't they love to see how you humans prepare them for slaughter, how you hang them upside down so they're still beating hearts will drain out all the blood for you? And she, I said, no, no, I, don't put me in that category. And she said, isn't it funny how arbitrary your decision to eat meat is? And I said, no, no, stop. Don't put me in that category. I, I don't eat meat. And she said, I know. And then I walked deeper in the forest, managed to get away from the picnic tables and the outhouses that lined the forest edges. The roaring cars gave way to the rustling of tree branches, the crackling of fallen leaves under my step. When the wind tunneled through, the wind whistled and sang as it flew past the bark and leaves. I walked uh, and listened to the crack of dead branches under my feet, and I felt a branch of brass my shoulder, and I looked up, and I could almost hear the trees speak to me, and they said, thank you for letting the endangered animals live here amongst us. We do think they're so pretty, and it would be a shame to see them go. And, and thank you for recycling paper, because you're saving us for just a little while longer. We've been on this planet for so long, embedded in the earth. We do have souls, you know. We cling with our roots. We don't want to let go. And I said, I, I don't do much. I don't do enough. And they said, we know, but we'll take what we can get. And then I woke up in a sweat. So tell me, Bob Dole, so tell me Newt Gingrich, so tell me Pappy Cannon, so tell me Jesse Helm, so tell me Barack Obama, so tell me Jane Sebelius. If you woke up from that dream, would you be in a sweat too? <laughs> I mean, do you even know why we should save the rainforest? Oh, preserve the delicate balance. Just tear the whole forest down. What difference does it make? Put in some orange groves or, or concentrate orange juice could be a little bit cheaper. Uh, did you know that medical researchers have a very, very hard time trying to find up, come up with synthetic cures for diseases all on their own? It, it first helps to if they could actually find that substance in nature and a tree in a rainforest with a cure might be the only one of its species or one like it might be two miles away from it instead of right next to it. Uh, I wonder how many cures we've destroyed to plant more orange groves. Serves us right. You know, my motives aren't selfless. I, I know these things are worthwhile in my life. Uh, I'd like to find a cure to these diseases before I die of them. And I'm not just a vegetarian being I guess I think it's wrong to kill an animal unless I have to. I also know the excess protein pulls the calcium away from my bones and gives me osteoporosis. And the excess fat gives me heart attacks. And I know that we could be feeding ten times more people with the same the resources used for meat production. You know, I know you're looking at me and calling me an extremist, but I'm sitting here 
looking around me, looking at all the destruction caused by family values, and thinking of the right, moral, non-violent decisions are also those extreme ones. Everything is linked here. We destroy our animals so that we can be wasteful and violent. We destroy our plants. We destroy our earth. We're even destroying our air. We wreak havoc on our soil and the atmosphere. We dump our wastes into our lakes. We pump aerosol cans and exhaust pipes. And you tell me I'm extreme. <laughs> and these animals and forests keep calling out to me. The oceans, the wind. And I'm beginning to think that we just keep doing it because we don't know how to stop. And deep inside we feel all the pain of all that we've killed. And we try to control by having chemical-filled painkillers. And we live through the guilt by taking caffeine, nicotine, morphine. And we keep ourselves thin with saccharin. And we keep ourselves sane with our alcohol poisoning. And when that's not enough, maybe a line of coke. Maybe shoot ourselves in the head in front of the mirror in the master bedroom. Or maybe just take some pills, walk into the garage, turn on the car, and just fall asleep. In the wild, you have no power over anyone else. Now that we're civilized, we create our own wild. Maybe when we have all this power, the only choice we have is to destroy ourselves. And so we do. Thank you. I was not anticipating. Thank you very much. And I don't even have the schedule here, but I know that in two weeks, Two weeks from two, that will be the Wednesday after, after, um, I, I'll get yourselves all fat, and even though I'm a vegetarian, you'll all do it on birds, because that's the way you do that for Thanksgiving, but, um, get yourself all fat, and enjoy your weekend and stuff, because I won't see you before, because we'll have Michael Hogue for a feature on December 4th. So. Yay, Michael Hogue! He's coming all the way from South of St. Anne's, awesome. He is coming a little farther than everybody I freaking know. And then, Deborah Rosen is on the 18th, and then, if anybody's interested, www.chaoticarts.org slash thecafe, we can have a schedule for the 24 features, and I believe there was a man, Jerry, and I don't, not Jerry Pendergast. Uh, would you like to read something and finish out this evening, my love? I'm sorry. Come on up here. We're going to have to close it out with you, my darling. Jerry Reynolds, get on up here, my darling. I, I, we're short on time, but, you know, come on, come on up and read something, my love, and give it up for Jerry. Give it up. Give it up for Jerry. Yeah. Jerry Reynolds. Jerry Reynolds. Guess what? I call it warts spelled backwards. Straw. It's a color that Crayola has welcomed to its 64 pack box. Straw is what allows sippers to sip. Straw is the shortest thing that you don't want to draw. Straw is what the brain needy character in The Wizard of Oz was full of. Straw, although not the present tense is true, is what the first little pig built his house of. Straw might possibly have been the first resting place for the baby Jesus. And I just drew the last straw in order to explain. Grain. Oh, it's so very much. If you guys are interested in anything, K.O.S.R.X. Slash the Cafe, and I hope to see you in two weeks. Thank you, thank you, thank you.